Hello, my name is Cindy Swearingen with the Office of School Safety and Security, Oklahoma State Department of Education. No matter what form an emergency takes, whether it's a fire, an accident, severe weather, or intruders, responses need to be planned in order to keep people safe. Having a standard response protocol in place at your school is the best way to prepare your students and staff for an emergency. Standard response protocol takes the form of five actions that are designed for specific types of events. Lock out, lock down, evacuate, shelter, and hold. A lockout is called when there is a threat or hazard outside the school building. When a lockout is called, students and staff need to get inside. Staff should lock all outside doors and practice increased situational awareness. A lockdown is called when there is a threat or hazard inside the school building. When a lockdown is called, students should move out of sight and stay silent. Teachers and staff should lock classroom doors and turn off the lights, then move out of sight and stay silent. Personnel should follow local procedures when interacting with first responders. When they're able to, teachers should account for all of their students. An evacuation is called when it is necessary to move students and staff from one location to another. Students should leave their possessions behind. While evacuating, form a single file line and keep your hands visible. Teachers should bring their class rosters and lead students to the evacuation location. Shelter is called when the need for personal protection is necessary. This is usually during a hazard event like a tornado or a hazardous material spill. Students and staff should take appropriate measures to avoid the hazard. For instance, going to the designated tornado shelter or leaving the room when there's a hazardous material and sealing the area. A hold is called when the hallways need to be kept clear, even during class changes. Students should remain in their classroom. Teachers should recover students and staff from the hallways and lock the classroom doors. In all of these actions, teachers should take role and account for their students when it is safe to do so. So long as there is not an immediate danger, as in lockout or hold action, students should do business as usual. During any event, try to stay calm and listen for instructions from first responders. Practice these actions using drills and make sure everyone is aware of the terms and symbols used for these actions. With the standard response protocol in place, Along with effective drills, lives can be saved when a situation becomes critical. For more information, contact the Office of School Safety and Security by either phone or email, or visit our page at the Oklahoma State Department of Education website. Good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> so um, really, really glad to have you here today. Um, up front, I want to tell you my goals, right? Um, I, I'm hoping that, that you leave today with, um, with these in mind, that, that you go back to your school or if we have a diverse crowd, you know, uh, your place of business even, that you, that you think about adopting a consistent system that grows with the student or grows with your employees, if you will, right? Um, that consistency, that's going to be the key. You're going to hear more about that today. Educate all of your stakeholders on, on whatever your specific standard response protocols are. Um, you know, it may not end up being, I love you guys, but you're, you're going to learn about, I love you guys today. And, uh, they, they do have a good system that's, that's easy and ready to adopt. And then finally, this all leads to you know, you creating that culture and climate that's centered around safety. Um, this is, this is maybe the spearhead of, of planning and um, of, of you, you know, starting the process of, of training everybody at your school system. So I do, I do hope you leave with those items. Okay, so my name is John Parker. I'm executive director for the Office of School Safety and Security here at the Oklahoma State Department of Ed and presenting with me today Mr. Stephen Lynch, who's a, um, a safety and security specialist for us. And um, we got a special guest, uh, Mr. Brad Logan, Director of Operations from Woodward Public School. So I wanted to show you a picture of the team real quick, right? Um, you, you just heard from Cindy up there up top and in the video. And, uh, and we have, um, you'll, you'll see the other specialists down there. Jason's actually at the wheel driving the, 
driving the webinar for us today. And uh, he's, I'm so thankful, great shout out to him. He, uh, he keeps us in line with the tech. Um, Miss Lindsay Moore down there, just she just takes care of all of us really and makes sure that uh, we all get connected with the resources that we need and, and to include our partner in districts and our partner at schools. Um, if you ever need anything and you can't get a hold of us, Lindsay will, will uh, she, she'll be able to work for you, reach out. So um, this team is designed to go out to the four corners of the state. They're designed to be relational, to help you. We are a resource, period. Right, not an, an, an extension of uh, compliance or we're not coming out to get anybody or to catch anybody. Um, we're just here to provide resources for you. And that's what we're doing today. So uh, without further ado, a little more about standard response protocol. And I, I wanna remind everybody too, um, it, it's meant to, you know, these things are hard. I feel so bad for our teachers right now, um, but we wanna have as much of a conversation as we can, as is possible. Um, please don't uh, please don't hesitate to put something in the chat. We will we will try to stop along the way. I'll, I'll also monitor and uh, throw some questions um, to Steve and to Brad. And uh, but but don't don't be afraid to put something in the chat. So who are your stakeholders? Isn't this always the most important, right? If we're I mean if we're teaching, you got to know your audience. And uh, I think if you're running a school, you got to know who you're serving. And with these standard response protocols. Right, the, these it's these folks right here that that's going to make your life easier. Right, the students that's that's an obvious one. Their their health, their safety, their well being is paramount first and foremost. Um, they they have to have that that consistent set of language, those consistent protocols that's going to grow with them. Um, and I know I know you'll hear more about this um, later, especially with Brad. He has an amazing story. Um, but we can't teach our littles one thing. And then when they come into middle school and high school, they're hearing different language or using different vocabulary. Uh, it just, it just causes um, confusion and a disruption in your services and or protocols, right? Faculty and staff, same, really the same. We want, we want district-wide effort here and uh, we want everybody to be on the same page. Parents, I think these are so crucial because for that one, for that biggest reason is, is that you know, <laughs> our kids, they have phones at younger ages and it, it, it just, it shocks me, right? And so when we have drills, if you do go into a, a lockout, a lockdown, um, any kind of scary moment where there might be anxiety, kids are texting and they're texting those parents and those guardians and wow, do the rumor mills start flying, right? So how, how much better would it be if our parents knew our protocols, we got to inform them, we got to educate them. And uh, I think this is, an, I think what you're going to hear and see today is an easy way to do that. First responders speak for themselves. If our fire guys and our EMS services and our, and our police departments and sheriff's offices, if they know what we're doing, then we're, there were, we're all better, stronger, faster. And media, this one is near and dear to my heart. From a state lens, we watch a lot of things happen. We watch the media blow things out of proportion, um, create fear um, sometimes. And, and I think a lot of times it's just the fact that they are not educated, right? They, they may not know that if you go into lockout or if you secure your school, that teaching and learning is still taking place. And if they're reporting or if they're, um, if they're sending something out on social media and the parents get it, um, we, we want everybody to know what's happening under certain protocols. And it's just, it's just going to make everyone's life easier. And, uh, and in particular, our school folks. Uh, so why does this all matter? Right. And, and that really relates to those stakeholders, but we, the consistency, the consistency is going to make everyone safer. Um, they're, they're, <laughs> that um, those appropriate steps and actions they take, they're trained, they're educated, and it, and it really becomes that same mechanism that our teachers use as they establish routines, as they establish their vocabulary and, and their procedures in their classroom, what happens to our kids, right? It minimizes their anxiety or their fears. 
uh, I know when I sit down in a new class, right? I, I don't know what to expect. I don't know what's going to happen. And uh, and as I learn those protocols, as I as I learn the vocabulary the teachers using, it it makes me relax. And so the same is true for all these stakeholders. And I think that might be the biggest takeaway as to why it matters. We, we want our kids to be confident. We want our staff to be confident as to what we do and when we do it and why we do it. So, all right, Jason. Um, and, and guys, so I am gonna pass off to Mr. Stephen Lynch here. And Steve, um, I want, uh, I know you're gonna tell the I love you guys story, but you also, kind of have a, a, a personal aspect to this. So um, I, I'm gonna, I, I, this, is, this is a very powerful story. So I do want to mention that uh, it, if, if, if I have folks out there in the audience that you may have experienced trauma, we're not sure maybe where you're coming from or if you've come from a school that's ever had horrific acts of violence, just um, be prepared and, uh, and, and kind of a, a trigger warning here, if you will. So Stevie. Thank you, John. Uh, and I'd like to welcome everybody today for joining us. And we're going to leave this slide up as I tell the story. Uh, and so here's the story behind this, this particular slide. A man living in a battered yellow Jeep outside Denver, Colorado, with a Denver address, walked into Platte Canyon High School on September the 27th, 2006. He was carrying two handguns and a bag that he claimed to contain a bomb. Uh, authorities later said that the bag only contained some rags, some scissors, some duct tape, and some sex toys. Uh, you know, another question is, how did this man or perpetrator enter a school, wander around unchallenged all morning? And then he walks upstairs to an honors English class, fires around into the ceiling, and demands the teacher and all male students leave, leave the room. And he also allowed a few girls that he selected to exit also. Uh, you know, he, during this siege, he kept six girls and he lined them up at the front of the classroom in front of the chalkboard held a gun to them and molested them. He eventually released four of them between somewhere between 1230 and 145. And while still holding two of them, he soon cut off communication with law enforcement, warning them that something drastic would happen around 4 p.m. Half hour before that deadline, SWAT blew a pretty good size hole in the side wall of the room, trying to get a shot at him. And uh, unsuccessful, they then blew the door off the hinges and a man fired at SWAT. And as 16 year old Emily Keys tried to escape, he shot her in the back of the head and then turned the gun on himself. During this ordeal earlier, Emily's father had texted his daughter, Emily, are you okay? Her text back was the one that you see on your screen here today. It said, I love you guys. Her father texted back and said, where are you? But she never responded. This text and this slide led to the I Love You Foundation started by her family and friends. And as a teacher and coach in, for 35 years in Oklahoma, I experienced one of my students dying in my arms as I administered CPR for over 30 minutes. I hope none of you experience something like this. The effect on the school, the staff, the students, uh, the whole community is just overwhelming. And I'll never forget that, that student's face in the scene that day that I experienced. But like the above story, we never know who is out there on any given day. And it kind of goes along with a, uh, a thing that we've used in our safety in some of our courses and classes. But, you know, it's very easy to miss what you're not looking for. And that's why standard response protocol is so important. It helps schools address various emergency situations 
uh, and the best plans on who to contact, how to act during that emergency, and how to mitigate risk and what to use to help us minimize loss. You know, we need to remember that crisis isn't a choice, response is. And I'd like to now show you a few posters or slides that are downloadable by the I Love You Guys Foundation. This is Mr. John Michael Keyes. This is Emily's father. He's, he goes around the country speaking on Emily's behalf in this story. Okay, Jason. And this is one of the posters uh, obtainable through their website. And it pretty much tells everything you need to know. Hold in your room or area, clear the halls as, as we're on Cindy went through these. Secure, get inside, lock outside doors, lock down, locks, lights out of sight, evacuate and shelter. In emergency, take action. These are some a thread outside you secure, or we call it lock out. Uh, thread inside, we lock down, uh, and, and it goes on bomb, earthquake, fire, and explains some of those. This one I think is a good one because this one here allows <clears throat> in the other, the other situations, what we have is teaching is, is not, learning is not going on in most of those. But this particular slide with the hands, we've, we've locked out and learning is still going on inside the building. And therefore it's also a good slide for media, uh, you know, for them to see when the, they come by. So anyway, uh, I think that's the last of that. That's just a few examples. There's many more if you go to their website. And uh, at this time, I'd like to turn it back over to Mr. John Parker to introduce our special guest today. Steve, thank you, sir. It is a very powerful story um, and it gets me every time. <laughs> um, Guys, we're, we're really, really pleased to have Mr. Brad Logan today from Woodward Public Schools. Uh, Brad, I think he's on his ninth year at, at Woodward and uh, 27 total years in public education. And my hat's off to you, Brad. That, that's, a, that's a long time. We, we, uh, we're proud to have you on today, sir. Thank you very much. I appreciate the invite. Thanks for the opportunity to, to speak. Uh, something near and dear to my heart. Steve, thanks for that story. Uh, again, it's again, very, very touching, very, very fitting for this. So that we know how to how to respond to, to some of these things. And so, uh, again, thank you, thank you for the opportunity to to be here and speak. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. I just right off the top, I just want to encourage everybody that that's part of this to to reach out to to these guys to, to the Office of School Safety and Security for for the resources they have, the free resources they have uh, to help in any way possible, uh, just number one off the top, just, just really reach out to them and, and bring them into your school. Uh, they'll travel any, any time, just bring them into your school to help you in any way that, that you have, uh, that you see a need. So, and this is definitely one of them. Um, just, just a little bit of background. I came to Woodward as, as assistant principal, was assistant principal for, uh, for three years, uh, became the head of high school principal for four years. I've uh, been in this role now of director of operations, which, which we created a couple years ago. I've been fortunate to step into this role um, and, and take a, a district, uh, district attitude toward, toward safety and, and security for our, for our entire district, not just uh, for the high school. Um, when I was a high school principal, uh, safety and security is something that's near and dear to my heart. I've, I've got a, not a background in law enforcement, but I'm a son of a, high, of a higher patrolman. I'm a fireman, uh, dispatch for sheriff's offices and things. So I've been involved with law enforcement, different things throughout, uh, throughout quite a while. And, and so it's a, something that's near and dear to my heart. So as a high school principal, it was something I was I was uh, passionate about was making sure that that I was doing things correctly uh, for our for our school for our students, keeping everybody safe, running drills appropriately, using the right terminology. Uh, I remember back in the day, whenever we first kind of got started as a principal, one of the guys came out from Homeland Security telling us we need to use the uh, code words and, and code code tones and uh, saying things like we have a we have a chess meeting in room five and and well, we don't have a chess club. We don't have a chess meeting. So that means there's something up, you know? And so uh, that, that's the way it used to be, uh, but that that's confusing. Uh, one thing I began to realize as a high school principal is I had staff that, that worked at different sites throughout our district and they would come to our site 
and we would run a drill and they would say, now at your place, lockdown means this, but down at the middle school, lockdown means something else. Uh, I was I was simply using the word intruder uh, for an intruder drill. Uh, to me, that was simple. It made sense. It was pretty obvious what it meant. Uh, and I thought that was that was the right way to go. Uh, but across our district, our principals were doing the best they could uh, and were uh, using the terminology they thought was was most effective. Uh, but began to realize with with students coming up from those other sites as they would uh, progress through our system, uh, they were confused. They didn't know what what that meant. Uh, teachers that were working at multiple sites or, or even transferring from one site to the other through the years, uh, they were confused. Uh, so when I was fortunate enough to step into a district role, uh, that's one of the first things I needed. I, I began to realize I need to get this uh, standard across our district. Uh, and when I began to do that, and look at, I end up finding through through conversations with our, our, our SROs, our, our resource officers here at Woodward, uh, I was able to find uh, one of them had attended an I Love You Guys Foundation uh, conference. And he was very passionate about that. He pointed me in that direction. I began to look at that and thought, man, this is, this is, this is, this is it. This is a great, uh, great terminology. It's great uh, resources. Uh, number one, the best thing about it is free. Uh, it's, it's, it's that they're on the website for you to download. Uh, there's there's nothing, no cost. I've, I've called these people on the phone and talked to them uh, personally about different things. Uh, just kind of get a little, little deeper with a couple of these things and uh, they're there to help. Uh, so one thing that, that I had to do as a high school principal, where as a, now the director of operations, I kind of admit that what I was doing as a high school principal wasn't wasn't right. Uh, I needed to change my, vernet, my vocabulary as well um, and what the high school was doing. So those teachers that that I had ingrained and, and, and here's, here's the way we need to do it. Uh, when I got into this role, I changed those things. And, and uh, so I had to admit to all those high school folks that, hey, we've been doing it, been doing it wrong for a while, and, but I found a better way. And that's, I think that's what we're always about is finding a better way. Uh, the biggest thing with, with this, again, the resources they have on the website are free. Uh, the time involved with this was, is just simply the time to, to introduce this to your folks, uh, introduce this to your staff, and then introduce it to your, to your students, uh, to your stakeholders, those that, that John was mentioning. Um, one of the things that we did um, was that we, just the time to educate our staff, we took a, a part of a, one of our personal our professional days at the first of the year. Uh, I gave all of our admin the resource, introduced it to our admin first at admin meetings, uh, asked them and, and, and uh, kind of required them to, to introduce it to their staff that for one of the first professional days uh, so that they were familiar with it, so then we could get kind of trickle on down to the, to the kids. And as far as cost and time, man, that's that's it. I mean, it, it's it's just it's the effort put into it. But as far as monetary cost, there really there really is none. Um, you know, at first when we began to to implement this, uh, just like I said a while ago, my high school staff was was kind of ingrained in one thing. The middle school was doing one thing. They were using terms like hard lockdown, soft lockdown. Um, at the high school, we were using uh, intruder, we're just using simple lockdown. Uh, we never did a, a soft lockdown, anything like that. We we're just using different terminologies. And, uh, so, you know, initially our administration, when I first introduced this to our administration at an admin meeting, they all kind of gave me that look like, really, we're going to change something, you know, it's everything else going on, you're going to change things. Uh, so they're kind of hesitant to, to take this back. Um, but, and I, so I kind of had to stay on top of them about make sure you're using the, the proper terminology. We printed these things off. They're, they're sitting there taped up, posted by every single uh, PA, every single intercom we have. They're, they're, they're posted right there. So when they grab that intercom phone to start announcing a drill, it's right there. They know exactly what to say. The, ver the, the, the vocabulary is right there in front of them. Um, and so I kind of had to stay on top of them about, hey, are you using, have you, changed, have you changed or using, I love you guys stuff, are you using this, these words? And, oh yeah, I forgot to do that this time. We just, my, my staff wasn't clear what we were doing. And so, but it, so everyone has to, but, but now, now that we we're, we're in it for a year and a half, uh, not counting March to May, I guess that, that, I guess we just blank that out, but. Um, Brad. Yes, yeah, sir. Let me, let me ask you a quick one while we're here on this slide. Can yeah. you just address what your experience was from the real littles. I mean, was there, there was, was there a different training protocol for the littles versus what the high school was receiving? Can you just kind of talk me through that real quick? No, not really. I mean, you know, we, we put it in the teacher's hands to, to teach those kids. Uh, the other thing we also have is, is great, uh, great community 
uh, involvement with our with our uh, our SROs and our fire department. We've got a public education officer with our fire department uh, that she was able to to help out and is available to go into the classrooms and help teach this uh, to the kids. That's the great thing about this uh, these protocols is, is that that terminology is, is simple. It's simple enough to teach the littles, teach go down to pre K and go down to our early childhood center and teach those guys uh, what lockout means because it. Right there on the on the posters it says locks lights out of sight. I mean it's, that's pretty standard. That's pretty basic. Uh, on on the lockdown stuff, it's you know get inside, clear the halls. It, it's it's the the terminologies right there for them. So the instructions are there for them. So it's a great system that grows with the kid. Uh, it grows as they come through the district. They're talking the same language down at, at our early childhood center elementaries as as they are at our high school. And so that's a that's a huge huge piece of this too. Um, I say as I, as I began this, I began looking at our talking to our SROs. We, we're fortunate here to have have two resource officers um, here. The gentleman you see on the screen there is is Lieutenant Jack Brown. He's actually been at our school as a re, as a resource officer. For, I think for before I was here, I think this is his fifteenth year in, in Woodward Public Schools. Uh, both of our guys are, are full time Woodward Police Department uh, officers. Uh, salaries are split between the district and the and the city. Uh, but they remain on as 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 uh, Woodward uh, police officers. Uh, definitely brought them in on this uh, conversation before I began to change what we were doing as a district. I said, "Is this something I present to them?" We we the three of us sat down and said, hey, "Here's what I found. What do you guys think? Uh, do we need to move, change this, tweak it?" And they they both loved it, and they're both uh, super glad that we have it in place, um, have it in place now to 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 go forward with. So. Uh, again, our fire department's got a public education officer that, that she's she's been great, great to work with and then help us uh, educate our kids. She's she's dynamic to come to our schools with fire trucks and uh, whatever we need to, to educate our kids in any uh, any form or fashion. She's she's amazing. So uh, we, we've been real, real fortunate there. Uh, right. One more quick one. Um, yeah. If we got it, and, and in your area, I know, I know you know and can relate. Um, I know Woodward's a kind of a, a hub for the Northwest, but in a small rural school, right? Um, and they may not have as, as readily available access to those specific community partners. What would you suggest on how they move forward? Uh, this this stuff is, is simple enough, especially in, in whether it's I Love You Guys Foundation or whether it's something else that you find. Uh, the key the key to me is just be consistent, get it into your classrooms. Um, th this is something that's that's simple enough to teach. You know, your teachers, your your administration, uh, anybody that's in your district that that has uh, has this as a passion, that has something they want to do uh, with safety and security. I mean, this is this stuff's easy to teach. It's just the key to just using finding the terminology that works for you and your district. Uh, your kindergartners know what it means. Your seniors and juniors know what it means. Your teachers know what it means. Your custodians know what it means. Uh, that's important. And so um, we are fortunate. We're, we're, we're large enough area to have, have these resources, but uh, you know, if it's, if it's just me um, in, in, a, in a district as a superintendent or, or a principal, you know, I can go down and teach this stuff to my teachers and let them teach it to their, to their kids and the way they, they feel like it's best for them, you know? So um, we're, we're fortunate to have this, but not, not necessary. It's just kind of a bonus above and beyond. So um you see there. You see a list there on on your screen of, of our uh, some of the stakeholders here: the local PD, sheriff's office, fire department, our 911 communications department, uh, our emergency management. Um, again, I'm fortunate enough to to be on a first name base with all these guys: the, the sheriff, the chief of police, and uh, again, I mentioned them as a Woodward has a, a full time fire department, but but we are also a combination department. We have a volunteer component. Um, I'm fortunate to be one of those volunteers to help out, so I've got a very close relationship with our fire department. Um, our, our emergency management uh, up here, Matt Leenbauer is our emergency manager for Woodward. Um, he's, he's been amazing uh, through all this. And one thing, uh, those of you in, in public schools, that hopefully by now you've developed a great partnership with your emergency manager um, through the distribution of PPE, distribution of, of sanitizers and resources. And, uh, you know, my guys, Matt, Matt has called me, said, hey, do you need any of this? I've got this. Or I've called him, hey, I need some of this. Do you have any? Can you get me some? Um, he's been been right on the ball with all that stuff. So, uh, <clears throat> emergency management's been a, uh, a a blessing uh, through all of this for sure. So, uh, been a, been a great resource to us. <clears throat> um, you know, again, 
as we as we plan as we have um, mercy operation plans these, these need to be involved in that the standard response protocols the uh, listed uh, the the standard response protocols are you know as we begin as if whether it's a drill whether it's an emergency uh, these words this terminology just simply a, a kind of a trigger uh, to trigger the the responses the procedures the emergency procedures that that you're drilling that your people need to be familiar with uh, but these are these these words here are just a trigger to begin that uh, one of the things that we've been able to to adopt here we felt like we were one of the one of the early adopters was the rave panic button uh, that again has come straight through uh, the the office of safety and security uh, so thank you guys for that opportunity to to add, add that to our school system um, that's that's a great resource if y'all have not uh, yet uh, gone through that process to, to get that implemented in your district. I really highly encourage you to do that. Again, 100% free. Uh, what, what it costs you is a little bit of time and, and an effort to get it done, a little bit of aggravation to get it set up, uh, but it's but it's it's it gets done. Um, you know, it took a little bit. One my first first month on the job is one of the things I undertook was to get that set up, uh, uploading all of our staff, geofencing all the areas so that that thing works correctly, so that when they push that button. Uh, the response goes to exactly where that person is, uh, but that's, a, that's an outstanding uh, resource as well to have that rave panic button uh, to notify uh, not just not just the people within the school, but to notify the administration and the school uh, admit, school personnel that need to come and respond uh, to help out in that situation, along with calling your 911 operator and getting them involved as well. So um, it goes it goes right along with this. It's it's a, another another tool in that in that toolbox to, to add to all these things so um, you know as far as our as we drill with these things you know uh, what we've the posters that Steve talked about and showed you a couple uh, as you go on the website golly is there's just overwhelming amount of resources that, that I love you guys has on there these posters are one of them guys there's there's letters um, on there for for the media there's letters on there to your parents to introduce this stuff to your parents so the parents are familiar with what it means if your school's on lockdown or lockout um, so there's 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 all those kind of resources these posters just to download there are a couple of things on there you can you can purchase if you want, wish to purchase some things they have some things on there like that too but I've done all this with, with the, without really spending a dime uh, on anything that they have um, so, you know, again, our drills are, are using, using these protocols. Uh, they're all posted right there at our, uh, at our intercom sites. One of the things through the rave panic button that's available is, is a staff assist feature. And it's the, the main use of it is, is, is an inner kind of like a group me uh, type, type communication uh, within, the, within the school system. Uh, but one thing I've, I've asked our, our excuse me, <coughs> that I've asked our, our administration to do is use the staff assist feature uh, during drills. Um, I got that tip from watching a, a rave webinar for going on rave and one of the webinars they put out. Uh, so I highly recommend those as well. Uh, basically as they, as we do a drill, say it's a tornado drill, our administration will get on staff assist and just announce the drill on staff assist. Um, and that way the teachers kind of get used to receiving those notifications on rave. Uh, the second bonus is that it gets people quit being scared of that, of that button. It's, it's kind of an intimidating button. There's a, there's a red exclamation point that's on your screen there and they're afraid they push that button and, and policing will show up with guns drawn. And uh, it's kind of, kind of a little anxiety about pushing that button. Uh, by using staff assist, it kind of helps them soften that. It kind of helps them understand that, hey, this is, this is a useful tool. Uh, so it kind of get used to, to using that and get to receive those notifications. And so um, again, that, the staff assist part of, of RAVE is really, uh, really a, a useful tool as well. So, I'll, again, I just just wrap up by saying thank you guys for the opportunity to to speak and and uh, those of you in the school system, man, I really encourage you to reach out to these guys with the office of safety and security and just the, the vast amount of knowledge and experience they have to offer to offer us as a school system is just just amazing. Uh, so, John, I thank you guys for your team and everything that you guys are doing, of course. Brad, we thank you, sir. <laughs> Thanks for being on here today. Um, I do, you know, in case anybody else has any, any other questions, now would be a great time. But Brad, I want to I want to ask you another quick one. Um, sure. And this one really has to do with planning. And you 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 touched on this a little bit. I, I want you to just kind of go a little deeper. This um, 
emergency operation planning, your district plan, um, your functional annexes at your school sites, um, they are different than what we're talking about today. Could you explain just how they might, how those puzzles, how those pieces fit in, but they're different? Well, Jason might be a better resource for explaining some of that, but uh, yeah, I mean, this, again, the, these standard response protocols are, are in my, my opinion, are, they're, they're that base, that trigger word, the trigger uh, to trigger those responses, to trigger, to get us into those procedures uh, that we have in emergency operations plans. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a big animal. Once, once something goes on, uh, this just simply is the trigger key to say, hey, something's happened. Here's our immediate response. Uh, our, then, our, then our emergency response, our emergency operating procedures kind of takes it from there and kind of runs and goes a little deeper from there. And it's, uh, it's, it's a big animal again, it, but it's a, it's a necessary, necessary piece of this. Gotcha. Yes, sir. I, I think that, I think that's it. It, it's that, it's that first step, that initiator, right? But yeah. the real planning um, that, that follows is going to be unique to every school, every district. Absolutely. And, yeah. Um, yeah, I know, I know Woodward is definitely glad to have you. Um, so, um, Jason, if you wouldn't mind advancing, guys, we've, we've dropped a few um, items in the chat there as resources um, to include, if you wanted to see this again, or if you want to recommend it to somebody and or our past ones, um, we do these every month. And so that uh, safety awareness and action campaign is a web page on our website with the State Department of Ed. You can go back and, and preview and look at these, look at any of these webinars or any of these topics. Um, would love to hear some feedback from you. If you guys have something that you're curious about or that you would like to see us do, be sure and holler at us. And ultimately that's, that's really it. Um, what Brad's saying is true. We, we would be more than happy to come out and help you with anything. We are a resource. We're relational. Um, that is, that is our job is to connect you with professional learning opportunities, um, panic button, uh, our EOP work. And Jason, um, he really could speak on that. Um, it is phenomenal. If you are lacking or if you want a more robust emergency operations plan, give us a holler. We've got some great steps and we're gonna connect you at the end of our program with a, with a template that is very user friendly and will bring you up to date really with best practices. And, and it's, and it allows for that easy drop in of what's unique to your school. So I know that um, we're hitting, I try to keep these things and we never go beyond 45 minutes. I, I think that's, uh, that's about the sweet spot for, for digital learning in these, in this time frame and in these days. And we're, we're hitting real close. So I want to wrap up, right? Um, we covered that planning topic and that's really what this is, right? Um, I think the, the selling point that, that Brad was driving home is that it, it becomes um, the first step of that process, you know, with the initiator and the initiation, as far as adoption goes, so much of the work has been done for you. Brad, is that fair to say that, that those resources from, I love you guys, so much of the work has been done if you're looking to adopt this system. Is that right? They've taken it and really gone deep with it and really made it school friendly uh, where you can take it, download it, Obviously, you need to learn about it and, and study so that you're you're familiar with it. But it's it's right there, ready to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, clear and concise language. I, Brad mentioned early on that you know back in the day it was it was recommended that we have code words. I, I will never forget that uh, you know soccer practice has been canceled. That was the one at my rural school. We didn't have soccer, and so um, that meant to to lock down and. Um, the recommendations today are that, you know, if we got a bad guy on campus, he knows he's there. We want everybody else to know he's there. And so use clear and concise language with all that you do. Uh, and I think that that's so crucial as well as the substitute who may have walked in that day and isn't familiar with your protocols, isn't familiar. Um, you want something easy. You want those graphics, those posters that, that are clear to the kiddos or English language learners. Or, or folks that just might have a hard time with, with literacy, right? Um, we, we, got to, we got to make it to where all, all, of, all of our people in the school system can uh, know what to do in time of emergency. So 
And that's always about education. So educate your stakeholders, educate the folks that are in your school system. It doesn't take long, it's not painful. And uh, even if you don't use, I love you guys, right? Clear and concise language, get your signage up um, and make sure that your local media and your first responders and your parents know what you're doing if something goes down. Even if you're in a drill, um, things and rumors can get out of hand and we, we want everybody to know what those protocols are it'll it'll save you in the long run and then ultimately this is just that one of those baby steps one of those small components to you uh, fostering growing that safe culture and climate at your district at your school it is uh, more necessary today than maybe ever so um, if I see uh, no more, no more in the chat, uh, we really appreciate you being with us today. Big shout out for Brad again, Jason, thank you for driving. Stevie, thank you so much for that story, man. You, 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 uh, you, get, you get me every time. Um, visit the website, folks. Um, that's, where, that's where you can find more resources. If you want access to, to us, con call us, email us. Be more than glad to come out and help. So hope everybody has a great holiday. Take a few days off, rest and relax, and uh, come back strong in January. Mr. Gary Hurst, we so appreciate you hosting us. Take us away, sir.